I'm going to talk you through setting up a secure comms cluster, starting with just two Willigo TDEC Plus devices. You can always add more things later pretty easily. Each one will need an SD card. The TDEC Plus is very specific about what SD cards it, it needs. Check out the list on the website. For these two, I'm going to go ahead and use these two SanDisk 16 gigabyte cards. First thing, put in the SD cards. I just bought them. Whoops. And make sure you get these in all the way. Make sure you have a good data cable. If you have like a GoPro cable, that probably will work just fine. So I've got my USB cable plugged into the computer. Hold down the trackball, power it on by sliding the switch down. Now this device should be in flash mode. Open Chrome and go to www. This is the website right here offgridcoms.club slash firmware. I'm in the US, I agree to these terms. If you're not in the US, you pick outside the US, choose the first option here, TDEC Plus. If you're not using Linux, it'll look a little different for you. So I'll click connect, it should see the device, there it is, um, and I wanna install TDEC Plus USA. And this should just take maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds. Okay, this one's done. I'm going to turn the device off. Okay. And I'll repeat this for the second one. Now I've got my TDEX flashed. So I'm going to choose which device I want to be the root. So this is going to be like the kind of the master of the cluster. The admin, whatever you want to call it. Since this is the root, the settings that I pick on here, some of them are going to be copied by everything else that I add to the cluster. I'm in US East. Um, it's not daylight savings time right now. Uh, my device name, I'm going to call it my name. Okay, the cluster. Um, again, all the devices in the cluster are going to end up getting this as the cluster name. So I'm going to say home. You could use your last name or anything else. If you're in the U.S., always choose, you can just choose all the default settings if you're in the U.S. If you're outside the U.S., you can still choose all the default settings. You just might need to choose 868 instead of 915. You need to check your laws. Okay. So if you want to know what those settings are, you can, you can learn about that on the website. Once this reboots, I should have a cluster up and running. Okay, so my root is set up. It's got the little crown, so that means this is the, the root device. The next thing I need to do is add the second device to the cluster. Okay, the second device is ready to set up. I'm still in the same time zone. Still not daylight savings time. This device I'm going to name Bob. Why not? Okay. This is not going to actually be the root of any cluster. Every device just has to have at least one. So this is kind of going to be a throwaway one. So I'm just going to name it like temp and all the defaults again. Okay, so it's going to reboot. Okay, so now I've got both of these powered on. This is the one I want to be root. So I need to onboard this device onto this cluster. So I will choose on the root the selected root device on board and I need, probably need to move these apart a little bit if they're too close sometimes the transmission doesn't work very well so I'm going to choose on board this device I'm going to choose cluster join so they're exchanging information this device is bringing this new one onto its cluster if I wanted to set up uh, 10 more devices, I would follow the previous steps. And then the, again, this remains the root and they would be all onboarded onto this cluster. This typically takes maybe a minute. If they get stuck, you can always power them off, power them on and redo the process. It's totally fine to do that. Once they are done, they'll reboot like that one just did. And this one will reboot. Okay, so this one is ready to go. It's still the root. And if I were to look at the devices, there I can see Bob's in now. 
So now they are both on home. So they're both on the same cluster. This is the root. This is shows a person icon here. So it's not the root, but it's on the cluster. If I want to send a message, for instance, this guy will choose to send a message to Matt. The screen timed out, but it should flash here in a second telling me it's got a message. Yeah, so it was sent and confirmed, which is what the check mark means. And this is flashing to tell Matt he's got a message. So I'll just go ahead and unlock it. And there I can see my message from Bob and I can uh, reply to it. They, they do also share location, so I can, for instance, see who's around. This guy sees Matt's nearby, and if I touch that, I can see his coordinates and how I could get to him. I can also look at when was the last time um, I was within radio range of Matt, the last known location, other things. I won't go into all this. If I look at who's around, I can see Matt's nearby. We've got a really great signal. Um, there's his coordinates. I could tap that to send him a message. I can see my own coordinates, and I can uh, tap that GPS icon and get a little bit more information about my own coordinates. I can scan that QR code and pull up a map on my phone.